Um, all right. Well, the skin is crisp. It is surprisingly good. I agree. Well, let me go ahead and get started. We've got a full house here today. Thanks everyone for showing up. I know the weather has been crazy and hopefully you're safe and warm and cozy at home and ready to learn how to cook some cook some wild salmon with me. So um, let me get started. I'm Kat from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. Um, if you're joining today's event because you're following along with the Live Better Wild meal plan, welcome. Um, I hope today gets you excited to cook a lovely seafood meal this week, whether it's part of the meal plan or just you know, a crispy filet of salmon for, you know, for a nice night. And if you're here because you're a fan of Alaskan seafood with or without the meal plan, also welcome. Um, I know there are probably some familiar faces in the crowd. Um, oh, hi, Mackenzie. One of my new coworkers is here. Um, so today I'm going to walk you through how to sear wild salmon. Um, it can be wild sockeye, wild coho, wild king, any species, this is the method that I find um, to be pretty foolproof and very simple. So um, to me, the platonic seared filet of salmon is juicy and flaky, not dry, um, but then it also has some crispy skin on top. Um, I'll show you how to make a savory, herby blueberry sauce to go on top of that. Um, so we'll just make it a little more fancy than like a plain filet of fish. But um, I will say that the salmon that Wild Alaskan Company offers really doesn't need the sauce. Oftentimes I'll forget to salt it, um, you know, when I'm doing a live event like this and it's still really, really good. So it doesn't really need anything, but um, I'm gonna make a sauce today just to dress it up a little bit. And plus it gives you a little more antioxidants. So that's my excuse for <laughs> adding that to the salmon. Um, before we get to the recipe and the cooking method, just some housekeeping. Um, if you wanna follow along with captions, I invite you to do that at the bottom of your screen. There should be a button that says captions or it might be under a drop down menu that says more. Um, if at any point you have questions during the event, um, you can ask that in the Q and A button also at the bottom of your screen. That'll help my colleagues who are with me here today field the questions um, to me or answer them on their own. If you drop it into the chat, it just might get lost if we're having a, you know, a salmon skin debate. So um, drop it in the Q&A if you can remember to do that. If you're watch watching via Facebook, because we're live streaming from Facebook right now, um, just go ahead and drop any questions in the comments. Um, let's see, any other housekeeping? Lastly, if you need to leave before the event is over, don't worry, we will send you a link in the next day or so. You'll get it into your inbox. Um, and since we're streaming live streaming on Facebook, you'll also be able to watch anything you missed right on the Facebook homepage. It's at Wild Alaskan Companies. Um, oh, not Wild Alaskan Company.com, Facebook.com. You'll see it in the chat. Um, Sanana is going to drop that in there. Um, so you can watch it right after. Okay. So I'm joined today by a few of my teammates from the member experience team. If they want to come on to camera to say hello. Hello, my lovely coworkers, Gwen and Sanana. Thanks for being here. Um, some of you might know Sanana from the last few live events. She was um, the chef du jour for the last couple of weeks. So um, reach out to these folks anytime you need anything, um, any questions you have, even after the event. Um, they're part of a really great team. So um, let's start getting into the recipe because that's what we're all here for. Uh, today, we are making a crispy seared salmon with a blueberry thyme compote. So um, I mentioned earlier that this recipe is part of a Live Better Wild meal plan. Um, some of you, like I said, might have signed up for that already, and that might be why you're here. But it's basically um, just a month of four weeks of wild-caught seafood recipes inspired by the new year a time when many of us are making or breaking or remaking resolutions to live a little better, eat a little healthier, take better care of ourselves, be kinder to ourselves. So there are a lot of ways to do that um, as part of the recipe team. And actually just as a fish family in general, we 100% believe that a really nice homemade meal of wild caught seafood can bring any of those resolutions 
to fruition, anything towards health and happiness. So um, that's why I'm really excited to be cooking um, a recipe from this uh, little selection. So um, if you, let me drop the link actually in the chat. Oh, maybe it's already there. Um, the link in the chat is going to be for the Live Better Wild meal plan if you haven't um, signed up already. Oops. Well, I've shared my notes to that too. So um, let me actually, Sanana, do you want to reshare that? Because I definitely just shared it incorrectly. Um, so if you want to click through to that, you can add your email to the bottom of the list and you'll get an email once a week with recipe inspiration and the guide. It's a downloadable PDF um, or you can access it on the site. So um, each Week, each week of the meal plan uh, focuses on an essential skill or tool that we think is really, really helpful for cooking seafood on a regular basis. So um, this week, I wanted to talk about an essential tool, the fish spatula. And this is going to be the essential tool to getting you to sear the perfect, perfect filet of salmon. Um, I can't live without this. If I travel anywhere where I know I'm going to be cooking fish, I bring this with me. Um, you don't need a fish spatula to cook fish, but it just makes it a lot easier to do um, because it's gets it gets under the fillet. It's a lot thinner. It's a lot longer. It's just you'll see in a little bit um, once I start searing the fish why I am obsessed with this one. So. Um, Let's get cooking. Um, so now if you want to switch over, I'm going to go over to my ingredients here. I have a little setup at the stove. Um, so like I said, recipe of the day is a crispy seared salmon with blueberry thyme compote. Um, we're just going to drop a list of ingredients into the chat here so you can take a look at that. Um, some of you might even be cooking along with me today. That's very possible. Um, so what I'll say is, first of all, don't be afraid of the word compote. It sounds fancy. It tastes fancy, but it's super easy. If you've never made one before, it's essentially a sauce that's made from cooked fruit, um, sort of like a quick jam that you make on the stove top. So today we are using frozen blueberries. Um, blueberries are not quite in season yet, so I like using a frozen option. They tend to be um, a little bit sweeter than um, the fresh ones at the store right now where I live. Um, if you know how to make applesauce, you know how to make compote. So um, just got a little bit of a uh, selection of ingredients here. Got um, two different fillets of salmon. I just wanted to show you um, a few different shapes of salmon that you might get. This is a fillet of sockeye. So sockeye is one of the smaller species of salmon and six ounces of this usually is not gonna look like a center cut. This is king salmon. King salmon is a large species, so the fillets tend to be much thicker, and that's why you'll get something like a center cut. You'll see this is almost double the size of sockeye. Um, but any fillet of salmon uh, can be seared. I actually like using um, the thinner ones because you get more skin. And um, I did mention earlier that I love salmon skin, so getting this nice crispy trapezoid um, is going to be my goal today. But um, Either way, we've got salmon, and I think I'll cook probably the sockeye. The part of the, oh, let's see. I have ghee, which is a, um, it's sort of like a clarified butter. Um, it has a really high smoke point, so I love using this for searing. Um, you can also use a high heat cooking oil. Um, I tend to not sear with olive oil because at really high temperatures it can burn. Ghee is just like one of my new favorite things to use, um, but something like a peanut oil or refined avocado, a refined avocado oil is a really good option. Um, so we'll be using that in a moment. Um, for the compote itself, once I get this going, all this needs is a little splash of water to get the juices going, some honey or maple syrup. I'm gonna use some maple syrup today. A uh, few sprigs of fresh thyme. Um, this isn't uh, absolutely essential. You can still make a compote, but it's going to miss that savory sort of taste if you don't have herbs in it. Um, rosemary is another really good option. You just will pop this in here in a moment. Some lemon uh, to give it a little bit of a punch. Um, and we'll season it up here in a moment. So uh, before we start searing, I just want to get this started. Uh, making the compote 
will take about 10 minutes or so. Oops, wrong burner. Here we go. Um, so what I want to do is just bring this to a simmer. I didn't defrost the berries before putting them into the pot, um, but they have been sitting here for a minute, so um, they're probably not frozen anymore. I'm going to add a splash of water to this, and the thyme is going to go right in there, just dropping that in. You can add the honey or maple syrup now or later. This sort of just helps bring out the sweetness of the berries um, if you need a little bit of help. So if you have super sweet berries, you might not even need to add sugar, but um, I think it really adds a nice, uh, a nice like intensity to it. And some salt. And this is already sizzling because I'm just making a small batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to a smaller burner here on the side. So that you can start cooking some salmon. All right, so this is just gonna be, be sitting over a low flame for the next 10 minutes or so. There's not too much that you need to do. Just give it a stir occasionally when you're making this to make sure it doesn't burn. And um, yeah, before we even, actually, you know what? I can go ahead and turn this on. I like using a stainless steel skillet you can use cast iron. Um, I tend to not recommend using a nonstick skillet. I know that sounds scary if you are used to fish sticking to the pan and completely falling apart, but it does actually inhibit a sear when you use a nonstick pan. So you're not going to get the super crispy skin. Um, so, you know, use whatever pan you have, a nice heavy bottomed pan like stainless steel or um, cast iron is my preference, um, but this will work for any pan that you have. Um, and the keys to making sure that salmon doesn't stick is having a super hot pan um, preheated. And then you also wanna make sure that your salmon has been patted dry. So I've already done this earlier. You don't need to, um, you know, squeeze these out like a sponge, but you want to get any moisture off the surface of the fish um, because for one thing that will inhibit the sear and cause the salmon to steam. Um, and it'll just, uh, it's just a really easy step that you think you can skip, but you really can't. So um, let me get my stove heated up. Everyone's oven's different. Um, but like a nice medium high is what I would go for. So this flame probably doesn't translate on camera, but I'm gonna go with this. We're gonna start this at medium high, wait for this to get super, super hot. Um, and then after that, I'll add uh, like a little, maybe a couple teaspoons or a tablespoon of ghee um, to the pan. Like I said, you don't have to use ghee, you can use butter. Um, and um, yeah, then we'll start start searing. It's a very quick um, process when you're using wild salmon, especially for a filet that's this sort of shape and thickness. This is going to be cooked in probably five or six minutes tops. For a thicker filet like this, this might take maybe eight minutes, six to eight minutes, depending. Um, so this is what I really love about searing wild salmon because it's a really great way to eat a really nice meal really quickly. Um, you know, lunch, dinner, any time of the week. Sometimes we'll even make this for breakfast. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this ghee into the pan here. So hopefully, yeah, that looks pretty hot. Um, but because you don't have as much time to cook a filet that's thin, you really need to make sure that you're doing everything right. Um, if you want to get a really good sear, you need to make sure you're leaving this on the pan for long enough that it gets crispy, but not so long that you're overcooking the fish. So that's um, another reason why this needs to be super, super hot to start. So, uh, and when I mean super hot, it needs to be sizzling hot. If you're putting the salmon into the pan, you want to make sure you're hearing the sizzle. If you you know, touch a corner and it's not quite sizzling yet, that is sizzling hot. 
you probably can't hear it because the mic on my phone is not very strong, but if you don't hear a sizzle, do not proceed. Take the salmon away and wait just a few more minutes or adjust the heat as you need. So um, like I said, I heard a really great sizzle there. So my pan is hot and ready. Um, what I need to have ready is my fish spatula because what we're gonna do is lay this into the pan carefully, skin side down, and then hold the salmon against the skillet with whatever spatula you have, um, a flat spoon, anything that gives a nice even pressure. You're making sure that the skin is um, basically resting right against the surface of the skillet. The salmon skin will tend to pull away as a lot of that moisture initially um, leaves the filet. So this is gonna get the salmon super flat and totally stuck to the skillet right now. This is absolutely stuck. If you try to move this, you will destroy the filet. So just trust that this is going to work. Um, probably enough prepping for now, but since we have that initial sear going, I'm gonna reduce my skillet to maybe like a medium heat um, because a lot of that um, heat that you need for the sear, it just needs to be that first 15, 20 seconds. Reducing the heat, if you don't remember to do it, it's not the end of the world. I know that this is like a lot of things happening at once, but this will just prevent the fish from overcooking so much, especially when it's a thinner filet or a very lean filet like sockeye. Um, if you're used to cooking farm fish, just farm salmon specifically, um, sometimes it can be easier to get a sear because there's so much extra fat in farmed Atlantic salmon. Um, it's not a natural amount of fat, but it does give you more time to get a sear. And you know that might sound like a good thing, but these are not the fats that you wanna be eating when you're treating yourself really nicely and eating healthily. So, um, you know, this might just take a, a little bit of practice for you to get to know your, um, first of all, the technique, get to know the heat on your oven a little better because this is slightly, you have less wiggle room when you're, when you're cooking wild, um, wild mm -hmm. salmon this way. But once you have maybe done this a couple of times, I think that you'll really become like your own pro in your own kitchen. And um, I don't know if I said this earlier, but this really is my go-to method for cooking salmon. I love the contrast of flaky texture um, with the filet and the crispy, crispy skin. It's also gonna be done like super, super fast. So um, while this is searing and stuck to the pan, we do not need to move it. Um, I'm just gonna let this cook here for maybe three or four minutes. Um, and then magically the salmon will release itself from the pan. You'll see maybe, you can see the corner here, that's coming up very, very easily. Um, that's when you know the salmon is ready to be flipped, whether you're cooking sockeye like this or a thicker filet um, of king, it will release itself from the pan when it's ready. Um, maybe with a little nudge from the fish spatula, like that's okay, but you never want to force it because it's not ready to flip. And, you know, if you get a little anxious, a little impatient, and you end up kind of pairing the fish up, it's still delicious. It'll just be, you know, not, not the beautiful, beautiful end product that you wanted, but it's going to be just as delicious. So um, I'm going to give that another minute or so, but I'll just slide this in here really quickly. A little bubbling. I can start maybe stirring up the blueberries to get them a little softier. Yeah, might even turn the heat up a little bit. All right, so this is the moment of truth. I'm still getting a little resistance here from the filet, but actually, you know what? Too much resistance. I'm going to leave this for another moment. I realized I also forgot to season this. Like I said, I do that all the time. So let's just go ahead and add some salt right on top. Um, any questions while I'm giving this another moment so that I can distract myself from wanting to flip it? Yes, Kat, we have a few. Um, we One came through, can you use ground herbs instead of the uh, spring of the herb? If so, how much would you recommend? 
Absolutely. Um, I like using the sprig because then I don't have to chew on like kind of like tough dried herbs. I feel like my dried thyme is super, super stale, but dried herbs, it'll, the flavors will coax, be coaxed out with some of this heat that's in the pan right now. So yeah, absolutely. Whatever you have on hand, if you don't have fresh thyme or fresh rosemary, just toss it in there and, you know, it'll be maybe not as potent of a flavor, but it'll still be delicious. Um, you might have another question for me, but I am ready to flip this. So let's hold on one moment. All right, that came up pretty easily. There's no skin left on the pan, just a little outline. Now, flip it. So this is really, really golden, like, I, maybe you'll be able to hear it later. Like you can hear the spatula scraping on it. Um, and that's like what you see on social media now. People love like scraping spatulas on crusty, crunchy things. Um, I'm gonna let this cook maybe for another minute or so. And then I'm gonna turn the pan off and just leave it um, to rest while the blueberries are cooking down into something a little softier. I feel like I, I can hardly hear myself over the sizzling that's happening in here, so um, bear with me if you also can't hear me. Um, all right, I'm going to turn the heat off the pan here and just set this aside, maybe a bit over to my table. Man, that looks so delicious. If you, Sonata, want to switch back to the other camera, then I can maybe answer a couple questions while we're um, waiting for my sauce to finish. Sure. We did have someone ask about the oils. I know you mentioned that you were using, um, not not using olive oil, but is there something else that you could use? And also, would you be able to use Pam or a product like that instead of butter? I would not use Pam. Um, Pam is good for nonstick baking, but it's not going to work when you're using it to sear um, sear a fillet, whether it's skin on or skin off. Um, you're not going to get enough moisture. Moisture is maybe not the right word. You're not going to get enough fat um, covering the bottom of the pan when you're using a product like Pam. And that's really what you want when you're searing. So um, I today was using ghee. Um, like I said, this is clarified butter. Um, it's shelf stable actually, which I didn't realize I was keeping this in the fridge. It's actually a little chilly here, but usually it's like liquid, um, clarified butter essentially is butter that, or ghee is butter that has had all the milk solids removed. The milk solids are what burn. So you never want to be searing in butter. I know that there's some debate over that. Some people sear scallops in butter, and I don't know how, because I burn the butter every time when I do that. But using ghee or clarified butter, you get a little bit of buttery flavor, especially when you um, use a really nice quality one. It's kind of expensive. I, I splurged on this for sure. But um, you always get a very, very clean sear. There's no browning um, or, or darkening of the oil um, in my pan, which is great because um, you know, brown butter is delicious. Uh, brown butter is basically butter that's been toasted in a pan um, to a really nutty, nutty place. But um, blackened or burnt butter does not taste good at all. So um, anyway, that's what I use today. You can also use something like peanut oil has a pretty high um, smoke point, um, as does, I mentioned, refined avocado oil. Um, there are a few other oils. I think safflower oil. I'm just going to add, interrupt myself and add a little more water to my sauce because it's getting, looking a little dry. Um, and I'll let that cook down for another minute. Um, so, uh, I used to sear with grapeseed oil as well. Um, I switched it up because when, um, I know we're not searing scallops today, when you're searing scallops, you want your oven to be on like 11, like the hottest, hottest pan you could possibly um, manage in your kitchen. And I found that grapeseed oil would burn and canola oil would burn um, at that super high temperature. So I just like to keep things simple and use one oil that works for any temperature. Um, and yeah, 
that's how I met my jar of ghee here. Um, yes. We do have a few, yeah, a few more questions. Um, one was, uh, how do we know when the salmon is done? Like they like it softer, but her husband likes it more dry. Well, um, let me grab a plate here. So, um, with my camera angle being overhead, I don't have like a, a skillet cam that can show you um, when the salmon is done. But because you're working so quickly when you're searing fish, um, I tend to not use an internal, like an instant read thermometer. Um, using an instant read thermometer can really help you dial in the doneness of fish when you're doing something like baking, um, broiling even. Um, but when you have something that's actively cooking in the pan and you're watching it, um, what I look for on searing, or when I'm searing on salmon is, oh, I'll just, hold, I'll just hold the salmon like this. You'll start to see this white protein forming on that, on like the edges. Um, there's a little bit here. And especially on the thinner parts, it'll be a lot more visible. That's um, a flavorless, totally normal um, protein that's in the salmon called albumin or albumin. I forget, I always forget how it's pronounced, but um, you, once you see that coming out, you know that the salmon is almost done. Basically that gets pushed out when the salmon fibers start to um, tighten up. Uh, and that's when the moisture has left the salmon. That's when um, everything is getting closer and closer to being cooked. Um, so that's what to look for. But as I had this resting in the pan to know if it's done, you can just take a fork and see how easily this flakes off the side of the fish like that. Um, if it's not flaking easily, it's either very undercooked and still raw or you've overcooked it a little bit. So you can always just check on that. Um, you know, it's not gonna be a completely untouched piece of salmon, but you get a little snack while you're waiting for your sauce to finish. So I think I overcooked this a little bit for my taste because I like when salmon is medium rare, but this is still really good. Plus we're throwing a sauce on it. If you ever feel like you've overcooked fish, um, put a sauce on it. It'll solve a lot of problems, add more moisture to it. Or if you feel like it's completely unsalvageable, turn it into fish cakes. This is about medium done, which like I said, is a little more done than I personally prefer. I like when it's a little translucent in the middle, um, but I'm very happy because I have a great, great sear. Um, let me show you. I feel like I would just keep holding this salmon, very hot piece of salmon with my fingers, but this is super, super crispy. And I don't know if my mic will pick this up, but yeah, you probably can't hear that, but it's like very like crunchy sounding. So when I'm serving this, I like to serve the fish skin side up on the plate because as it's sitting there, it's putting off steam as it cools down. So serving it skin side up um, just really preserves that crispness that you've worked so hard to get. I mean, it wasn't that hard of work actually. So, but it, it'll, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, what I'm gonna do now is switch back over, if you don't mind, Sanana, and I'll take a few more questions in a minute. Um, switch back over to my other camera. I've got this really, jammy looking mix here and this on its own is delicious um it's basically just cooked berries at this point but i'm going to add a little bit of lemon zest to finish this off lemon zest will just give it a really bright flavor if you don't um have a zester and or maybe you just don't have lemons to zest don't worry about it. You don't need it. It just adds like a really nice flowery um, taste to the compote here. And then I'm going to add in a squeeze of lemon juice. This is really all to taste. So um, add a little bit at a time. Um, if you're making just a single serving of sauce, I think the recipe I um, that we shared today is for two servings. Um, you can always cut this in half or make the full um, serving and then just keep them in the fridge. So I'm just gonna pull out the time stems because they've given me all they've got. 
Um, and give this a little bit of a taste. That is nicely seasoned with the salt that I had added earlier. If you want it to be a little more savory, this is the time to add a little more salt. To this, to make it extra saucy, I'm just gonna drop in some butter. This is not ghee. Oh, this is probably too much butter, but um, let me just fish out this part for another thing. Um, this is full on regular butter and adding this to the compote is going to give it a really nice glossy sheen and make it feel a little bit more de decadent. Um, you can absolutely skip this step and have a really delicious um, fruity compote topping for the filet of salmon, but I like a little bit of the butter to make it um, more, even more saucy than it already was. All right, this looks so good. Um, I'm adding the butter at the end with the heat off so that I'm not um, burning it again. Um, this is just to finish the sauce. And let's go ahead and move over to my other camera so I can serve this up to myself. <laughs> All right, I've got a spoon, big spoonful of compote here that's just gonna go right on top of the salmon. And I love when the sauce just spills off of the fish like that. So beautiful. Um, and sockeye and blueberries. Blueberries are a very big thing in Alaska. You go berry picking in the summer. Sockeye, their sockeye runs, they start to run in early summer. So I think that there's some sort of magical alchemy that happens when you put sockeye and blueberries together specifically. Just a really nice, um, very robust flavor um, from the species itself. And then the really robust flavor of, these are wild blueberries that I just got in my, my freezer today. Um, it's just a really, really nice combo. So I'm just gonna take a bite if you don't mind. The skin was still crispy, even though I waited a few minutes to actually eat it, but this is so good. I don't know if you've had fruit and fish together before. You've had citrus and fish together before, but fruit like this and fish, it's just really, really incredible. Um, especially when you have the balance of flavors, right? And this one is such an easy one to make. Um, so yeah, while I'm chewing, you wanna send any more questions my way? Yes, we have quite a few. Um, one of them is, can you cook the fish with the pan cover to avoid splatter? You can. Um, it's totally fine to do that. I, um, for some reason, don't do that. I feel like I make a mess all the time in my kitchen. But what I'll say is, if you're patting your fish dry, you're not going to get as much splatter um, as if you're just putting something in there that has a lot of water on the surface. I mean, if I peek over at my stove top right now, the splattering is pretty minimal. Feel free to put the, the lid on. You'll just probably need to um, adjust the cook time a little bit uh, and it might not get quite as crispy, but that's a trade-off that um, you know you can make. Um, when you're putting the lid on, it's basically trapping the moisture and steam in the pan. Um, but if you have a nice solid contact between the skin of the filet and the skillet, it shouldn't interfere too much. Um, I tend to just because everything's happening so quickly, not put the pan, not put the lid on. Um, I, you know, it takes like two seconds, but for some reason I can't do it. You know, I couldn't even season the salmon because I was so excited to see her. So, um, yeah, I and see then, a lot of people on the yeah. crowd. <laughs> um, it does look amazing. Everybody's loving this skin. Um, what other types of liquids do you recommend to use for the compote besides water? Um. You know, I find water is just a very, very easy one to use because it's right at my sink, but you can always put in a splash of something like um, apple cider, like a fruit juice, and then maybe skip the addition of honey or maple syrup um, and, you know, just adjust that to your taste so that it's not too sweet or not too tart. Um I would even say you could use a splash of something like veggie stock, honestly. 
um, all the flavors will just sort of build upon each other and become more and more complex. Using water is probably like the least complex liquid to add to it, but you're adding so little. Um, it's basically just to get the juices going um, in the in the berries themselves that, you know, feel free to experiment and, and prove me wrong. <laughs> like even like maybe a splash of red wine might be nice in there um, to give it a little more depth. But um, yeah, I, I tend to just use water for this one. Awesome. And how do you know what um, is considered high quality ghee? Um, you know, I just have a, a, I'm lucky to live across the street from a store that sells high quality stuff. Um, I think you can buy this stuff online. It's like, I'm not endorsing them, but it's like full moon ghee. It's, it's made in Massachusetts. So it's sort of like local ish. And, you know, I try to, uh, try out new products like that to see, um, you know, what's growing and what's being produced in my region. Um, to sort of mix into my kitchen with like the other stuff that isn't, um, you know, because there's so many really in interesting things that are being made all across the country in different places, you know, Alaska for, for one thing <laughs> makes amazing salmon. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like if you see ghee out there, it's probably high quality because someone is making um, the effort to actually clarify the butter. Um, so yeah, I would just awesome. I, I wanted to I talk about ghee because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, do you recommend any other fruit that could be used besides blueberries? I would try this with strawberries. I think that would be a really, um, a really good, make a really good version of it. Um, either use smaller strawberries or, or cut them up so that you don't have these giant, um, you know, giant pieces of fruit in there. Um, we have one recipe, not for salmon, but it's with grilled peaches and halibut. So something like a stone fruit, like peaches might be a nice one to try with, um, with salmon. But I think like a, like a darker, richer fruit, especially if you're cooking with sockeye is a really nice pairing. Um, cherries could be, could be really delicious. Um, I've always wanted to try it with cranberries for, um, Thanksgiving, but, um, still haven't gotten around to that yet. So. And could you cook two different types of um, fillets in the same pan, like two different thicknesses? And then just how would you go about that? Just watching one doesn't overcook or? Yeah, um, you definitely can cook more than one fillet in a pan. I wouldn't do, so the pan I was using today, um, I was actually going to try to do both fillets, but then I just put my one fillet right in the middle and it's like, you know, you see it, it's like this big trapezoid. So I didn't have space to do that um, in this particular pan, just as long as you have enough room so that you're not crowding the fillets together. Um, you can cook as many fillets as you want as a, at a time, but just know that you're gonna have to keep an eye on, um, you know, which one you put in first different thicknesses account, like be, being accountable for every factor. Um, so when I'm searing for myself, it's super easy. When I'm searing for myself and another person, also easy. I would just have, you know, aimed better when I put my salmon into the pan. Um, Cause once it's in there, you cannot move it or don't even try it. It might, you know, start tearing up the skin, you know, within like the first few seconds. Um, but if you have enough room to flip and they're not right on top of each other and you feel like you can juggle more than two, then, you know, go for three or four. But just know that once you put it into the pan, you want to put the spatula onto the filet and press it against the skillet. You don't have to like crush it, but you do want firm pressure on that for about 15 seconds. So you're going to have to do it in 15 second increments like this salmon, sal filet number two filet number three, filet number four, and just like maybe like work in a circle um, if that makes sense. Um, if you're cooking more than one filet, uh, it also might just be easier to try to find filets that are about the same thickness so that you don't have to um, remember which one you put in first, but then is that one thicker? Is that one thinner? That's when things can start to go off the rails. And when you're cooking this quickly and not um, used to it, um, you might start like freaking out a little bit. <laughs> um, any other questions? Um, let me just do one more look. 
I think we have one more question and that's what sides would you recommend with this? Somebody doesn't oh. normally eat fruit with their salmon. So it's a first. Oh, interesting. Okay. So if you're not making a sauce, if you're making a sauce like this blueberry sauce with the salmon, I would just serve this with, I don't know, like a really fresh salad on the side because there's so much richness happening in here flavor wise, like a nice crunchy other thing might be nice. Um, but if you're not serving it with fruit and you just want to do the seared filet, um, you know, it's honestly, the world is your oyster. Um, I would personally, to keep things really simple, um, because the pan still has some fat in it and like some really crusty deliciousness kind of like building onto the pan, I would throw in like some baby spinach and just wilt it right into the pan with a little bit of garlic for like a really, really simple saute. Um, and any anything that's a quick cooking vegetable, just to like use whatever's left in the pan here. Um, I think that's like a really, uh, that would be my go-to personally. Um, but, you know, of course you can make any vegetable for this. So it's, it's when I'm thinking about pairing fish with vegetables, I think about the timing, like what makes sense for timing um, for me so that I'm not, you know, cooking uh, butternut squash for an hour um, and then, you know, just having like a five minute seared filet after that. Or if that's what I want to do, I just need to be ready for it and, and, you know, not, not sear the filet and then wait an hour for the butternut squash. So I'm um, just something like quick, simple saute in the pan, um, like garlic, you can, then you can use olive oil. You don't have to use like whatever oil you use for this. Um, and then you can have something done in like five minutes while the fish is, resting and waiting for you to dig into it, so. And I think there's one more question in the chat about the nonstick pan. Um, could you use a cast iron that is well seasoned? Absolutely, so, you know, a cast iron at that point is basically nonstick, um, but that is a great option. I just, when I say nonstick pan, I mean anything that's been coated um, with a nonstick coating like a chemical coating. Um, there's something about it. I, I forget what the exact thing is, but it, it, it inhibits the sear where the fish doesn't stick to the pan at all. Um, so then you're not getting a really nice crispy, you don't have those like three or four minutes of dread, like, oh my gosh, is the fish going to come off the pan? Because it never seals to the skillet. A good sear happens when the fish skin actually seals itself to the skillet. And it will do that with the cast iron pan as well, as well, even when it's well seasoned, it'll like stick there. If you try to move it, good luck <laughs> and, until it's ready. So yeah, um, I don't tend to use a cast iron skillet because I feel like, I don't know, I don't like having to think about if I'm cleaning my pan properly or not afterwards. And I know that it works, this works really well for me. So um I, it's my go-to. It's my friend. Amazing. And the last two questions. Um, one, do you know the size of your pan that you used? And also, can you use any salmon to sear like this? Um, you can use, first of all, I don't know exactly how big this is. I think this is a 12 inch skillet um, because they measure from edge to edge, not the surface itself. Um, so it's my, my, um, eyeballing skills here, right? This is a 12 inch skillet. Um, this would be good for one kind of wonky shaped fillet or one or two fillets, um, depending on, on the shape. I have a, another 12 inch skillet that I, um, that has like deep sides. So it's not, it's like that you have more surface area on the bottom and that for sure, I know I can fit two or three, um, fillets on. Um, but since this is like that saute pan shape, um, I only fit one on there today. Um, in terms of salmon types, any any type of salmon um, can work with this method. Even if you decide you don't want to have the fish skin, um, I would recommend keeping the fish skin on while it's cooking because this is really going to help protect the salmon um, from getting overcooked too quickly. Um, there's a lot of fat in the barrier. Most of actually the highest, like the skin is where the highest concentration of fat is in any fish. 
Um, this is what protects the fish from the elements. So this is where a lot of that omega-3 nutrition is sort of like hiding. Um, and uh, that's another reason why I really enjoy eating it. But um, I would leave it on until you're done. And then afterward, the skin should peel just right off the filet really easily. Like I'm not gonna peel it all off, but you can just pull it off like a Band-Aid at that point, um, whether you're baking it, broiling it, grilling it, et cetera. Um, so, uh, if you do decide that you don't want the skin on, um, before you cook it, you will use the exact same method, um, but you won't need to press the fish against the pan because you're not going to, there's nothing to sear there at that point. Um, the filet of the salmon is so lean. Um, like when I say the filet, like the actual like fleshy part of the filet is so lean that there's not really any fat in there to sear. So that part is never really going to get crispy. Um, unless you're crisping up a really, really, really fatty piece of fish. So, um, yeah, I think I answered all the question about that, that I wanted to answer. Yes. Thank you for answering all of those questions. And again, the fish looks amazing. All right. Oh yeah. Castor and skillets are really heavy. That's another reason why I never get mine out because it's stacked under <laughs> many, many things. Um, all right. Well, uh, Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Before we close out, um, I just want to bring up the Live Better Wild meal plan again. Um, you'll get this recipe and more, and it'll be a downloadable guide. You can cook along with me if you um, want to sign up. I think uh, next week you should be able to cook along with me if you um, uh, take a peek at what recipe we're making um, and yeah, like I said, you'll also get an email reminder once a week to just sort of poke at you to say like, hey, are you cooking your fish yet? Um, with like some recipe inspiration that we pull from there. Um, next week, we're gonna be doing a steamed white fish and papillote. Um, so that's like steamed white fish and parchment. It's one of my favorite uh, cooking methods for beginner seafood cooks, but also for cooks who know what they're doing and they just like to experiment with things. So um, hopefully you can meet us again for that. Um, I saw something in the chat about scallops. For those of you who are already Wild Alaskan Company members, regardless of the meal plan guide, we have an exclusive deal for member special that's running for Weathervane scallops. So if you like scallops and you've never had Weathervane um, scallops before, these are insane. Um, you're gonna love them. They're super sweet, super buttery, all natural. Um, they're actually the largest uh, species of scallop in the world. Um, so definitely don't miss the special. Um, they're one of, I think they're, everyone loves scallops. Anytime I ask, um, what anyone's favorite species of fish is, someone says scallops. I'm like, it's not a fish, but you know, that's okay. It's delicious. <laughs> um, so you can try some of the steering skills that you learned today on scallops. It's a little bit different. I'll definitely do, um, another event where we're searing scallops. It's like higher heat, even faster, even scarier, but like so, so good. And you'll never want to eat scallops at a restaurant again after you um, figure out how to do it yourself. So um, similar cooking method. Um, Sanana is going to drop a link for that in the chat for the special if she hasn't already. Um, oh, she did already. So yeah, check that out. Um, if you're not a member yet, I promise we're wrapping up. We have a special offer for you. Become a member today and you'll get $25 off your next actually off your first box of amazing fish from Wild Alaskan Company. Um, and you'll get access to exclusive member specials like the scallops um, and more. So um, you can sign up to join at the Wild Alaskan Company homepage. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's it for today. I can keep talking forever. I love uh, hanging out with you. I don't get to see your faces, but I get to see your um, questions and, and fun things in the chat. So um, I hope today gives you some confidence for a pan here. And I really, really hope that I'll convert some of you from not liking fish skin into at least giving it a try after you, um, you know, get a proper sear on the fish. It might be a game changer for you. So um, I look forward to seeing you next week or at another event. Um, thanks for coming. Live wild, everyone. <laughs>